Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. And I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in painting and also to um, hopefully uh, get those of you that have been painting a while to paint along with us or give us some advice. And today I'm in my dining room, which I'm sure looks a little bit different to all of you than where we normally are. I'm mainly familiar with craft shows. I'm not that familiar with art shows. So if you want to know more about an art show, you probably need to do a little more research or talk to someone who's been in one. By and large, I think China painters tend to do craft shows because they're close. A craft show is held at a church, at a uh, school, sometimes a community holds a craft show, and then they have what they're calling now vintage markets um, that you can participate in. And these are all things that we can take our China to to make sure people start learning about it. Let's, let's talk about how quickly you need to register for these. First of all, don't be fooled. Just because Christmas is still a couple of months off, you could register now. Um, some places, the year before, people sign up for the following year, or they'll um, they'll sign up and they'll put announcements in the paper over the summer. So I would say two to four months before the event, you should check with the venue and find out whether or not they're having the event and you know get all the particulars and get yourself registered. Now, is the show jury? There are two kinds of shows. One is you register, you sign up, they assign you a table, it's done. There's another one that's, that's called juried. Um, the vintage market in our neighborhood is juried. And what they ask for is, um, they ask for uh, examples of what you do, pictures of what you do. They need to be close-ups. I'm talking fine photos. Not You don't want to see the counter around it. You want to get as close as you can to the pieces that you're showing. Show a piece here, a piece there, um, but make sure that you are representing your work well. So if you're going to be selling Christmas ornaments, have a couple of Christmas ornaments in that representation. Uh, picture frames, useful items, things that, that they will, you know, like uh, the little pumps for soap and things, those kinds of things. Make sure you have those and then have your finer pieces. Anything that you painted picture frame and you framed it or um, plates, things of that sort that you're gonna be selling and have a couple of pictures of those. The next thing you're gonna need is a resume. They wanna know some information about you as it relates to China painting. So um, you're going to talk about, oh, let's say teacher, well, first of all, how long have you been painting? Have you taken from any famous teachers or any teachers in the area that they might know? But I'd still put down who your teachers were. That sometimes is helpful, the fact that you've been to several different places. If you have college curriculum or additional courses in art, um, if you could just summarize them. You don't need to go into a long, lengthy resume on this. They just want to know that you're qualified to show people what you do. Um, and then if you've won any awards, like Mary, you won an award at the State Fair. I think that that's really important to put in there because it means that you're very qualified to do this kind of thing. And they'll, they'll be very interested in seeing uh, that in there and know that you're, you know, good. And then the final thing is, even though you've got this resume and you've got your work there is they don't know what this is. They could assume you bought a lot of this stuff or put decals on. I always include something about the work that we do, about what it, it China painting is. And um, one of the things I hand out to people or attach to the back of pieces that they buy is this about your painted piece. And um, I think it's very helpful to have this because it will tell them a little bit about what you do. So maybe something along those lines. Now I'll read it to you so you know what it says. It says, uh, this, is, uh, this piece was uh, of porcelain was hand painted by, and then put your name there, uh, who creates the designs on every item. The paint is, is a powder comprised of several minerals combined with oils to create beautiful colors and textures, giving each hand painted piece its own one of a kind identity. The dry paint is ground with a mixture of oils to become an open medium until fired. Each piece requires three to four coats of paint and between each piece, uh, it's kiln fired and checked for quality. Any gold trim or accents are added on a final firing. 
These pieces should be hand washed to preserve the delicate details. So something like a summary of that, I think would be very helpful to anybody who um, is judging you uh, or a jury, you know, a jury that is looking at your work to understand what's involved with your pieces. Make sure that you know the following about your show. What type of show is it? Now, vendor shows in my neighborhood means somebody bought uh, Tupperware and they're selling it, or Avon and they're selling it. It's not the kind of show that I would think about that as a uh, show that I would want to have my china at, so personally. They have spices that they're selling. They're selling those mixes of stuff. So that's not for me. It, that's a vendor show in my neighborhood, but it may not be in yours. It may be called a vendor show regardless of what it is. So. How many people are attending? You can usually find that out from past years. Um, they'll, they'll tell you, um, they're trying very hard, especially when you get a registration form, they tell you how many people have attended because they're trying to get you to, to um, you know, have a table there. Um, let's see here. Will you need any special items? Uh, our vintage sales, our vintage uh, fairs required that you have a white tent of a certain size, 10 by 10, with certain closures on the side, it had to be a certain type of tent. You had to have certain types of tables to set up and it was really, really um, structured that way. So that, and it was primarily because it was an outdoor event. Um, my China, as you know, does not do well outdoors. I've done outdoor events and I've done them very successfully in a tent. Um, and I made sure that I built up a backdrop that would sort of protect it from the side that the wind is coming from or put up something on that side to protect my china. But it's, it's um, not something I do on a regular basis. So I decided that buying this tent was just you know, out of my means right there at, at that time. And it really wasn't something that would serve me in the long run. Table size, you need to know the table size, mainly because you need to have it, you may need to buy your own drape for it. Um, our average for us is six to 10 um, feet long. And um, I think that that's pretty, pretty typical in most areas. If you need to provide um, your own table covering, you need to know that ahead of time so you can purchase one. Uh, chairs. Now, some things I've been at, they charge for the chairs. They charge for the chairs, they charge for the table cover because they want them all skirted the same. Um, they even charge you for electricity if you need electricity. So check, um, it should be in your contract, but before you even get the contract, you, if you're looking at several shows there on the same day, you can ask these questions. Um, the location's available. If you can get a map of the layout, that's really helpful. You can usually judge by that where the most, um, the best spot is to be now. Unfortunately, where, when can you set up? Is it the night before? But will there be people there who will keep track, you know, keep an eye, security or something, so that your, your, you know, some of your smaller items don't disappear or do you have to be there first thing in the morning? And if you have to be there and set up, make sure that you have someone to help you and a good luggage carrier or a good cart to put your supplies on so that you can easily bring them in and out. Now, a luggage carrier or a cart, may be too big to leave at your booth, so you may have to leave it outside. Try not to leave a lot of clutter under your booth, under your table or your, your, in your booth, because I think you're gonna find that if you're busy, you're gonna be tripping over or moving those things all the time. Oh, do you need to have your own insurance? Um, we did a China show for the state and we were required to have our own insurance. I don't know if that's you know something for individual groups, but it might be at some of the art shows. It should be in your contract and you can find that out. And then you need to research that on your own. And if there's electrical available, they may charge you. If you need it, great. If you don't, fine. Um, I don't usually need electrical, but you may need lighting. And if you do, um, then you know check on that. Now, I want to say one thing here that's, I, hi Louise, that's very important. If you do this, like I, I used to do this once a year, just to kind of, you know, whittle down some of my things that I had painted and, and sell them. And then, so I had more room to paint more things. And I talked to my tax person and they said, well, that's definitely a hobby. You don't have to worry about it. I was, I told them how much I made. They said, you know, that's, 
No, that's nothing you have to worry about. But if you're doing this on a regular basis, then you are considered a business. And you really need to check with uh, a, an accountant or your tax person and just find out um, uh, what you, you know, what kinds of things you really need to uh, uh, do to incorporate and make yourself a business or whatever it is that you do to become a business in your area. But check that, make sure you're not, you know, going against the tax laws or anything like that. So that's just a caution note that I want to mention. What kinds of things are you going to need on your table or, or with you the day of? We're kind of at that point right now. One thing is get someone to help you. If at all possible, get someone to help you. If you have someone to help you, then if you need to go to the restroom or you need to take a break for any reason, or you get really busy, hopefully, um, then you have someone there that can step in and give you a hand. And that is really important. I can't, don't think you can do it on your own just because you have one table. It's, if you have one table, you still need two people, I think. It's really important. Now, make sure your phone is charged that morning and take a charger with you because you never know when you're gonna need your phone. And if you were like me and you use Square a lot, um, you may want both of you, if there are two of you there, to have your phones charged and to have Square on it so that you can use it. Square is a, um, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but it, it's a way of, of capturing credit card sales. Um, also check to see if there's Wi-Fi. You know, if, if you have to pay for data, data for the day, um, that can be expensive. So you may want to check and see if there's Wi-Fi available to you and, and check and see what your um, phone policy is to see if you have to pay for the data if, if they don't have Wi-Fi there. My table covering is black and I've set it up here so you can see. Um, this is a, um, I got it from Amazon. You can get it based on the tables you have. These are nice. If you need to buy a table cover, these come down, they're stretchy and they're polyester and you stretch them out and put them underneath both legs in the front and both legs in the back and they, um, the back is open so that you can get to your stuff that's underneath, but it, it creates like a skirt around the front, which is really, really nice. Now, please don't put anything on your skirt, any signs or anything of that sort. People will not see them. They might, you might see them when you're setting up, but once people start coming up to your table and looking at your things, any signs on your skirt are not going to be useful. Um, I got this. I just looked for whatever the um, highest rated was this year. Um, it's a little different than the one I bought yet last year, but they're basically the same thing. And uh, I found out I have two tables this year, so I need to buy a new one. I like black. I like black because as you can see here, my smaller pieces, when I put them on a black riser, really show up and it's not distracting at all. So I would encourage you to pick a color that's not distracting, um, either white or black. I would stick to those two if you're new because it's just, I, I think, shows off your china to its full benefit. And um, let's see, I'll show you some of these other things. We're going to talk about signage now. This is the coolest thing. You know, for years I did my china shows and it was part of the um, part of the Dearborn Porcelain Artists. So we had huge signs out in front of the building that said Dearborn Porcelain Artists and we all went under Dearborn Porcelain Artists and had our individual business cards at our table. And when I did the state show, it was the state and then we had our business cards at our table. I didn't think about it until I got involved in having my own business that this was perhaps a need and that's the sign. Now, I love this sign. I was a physician recruiter, as some of you know, and we use signage at um, all of our events. And I like this kind because first of all, it's retractable. There is not a great chance that it's going to get damaged when I move it. I got it from Vistaprint and I think uh, it's 11 and a half by 18 and it's retractable and it was $45 and I bought this a couple of years ago so I but I just checked the price and they're still around that and I got to design what I wanted on it I wouldn't go any lower than this year. last year all this information was buried this year I may even put it on the top of one of my risers 
so that everybody can see it very easily. Now let me show you the construction. In the back, just pull this up, and it automatically retracts right into the base. And then I just have two sticks to take out, and I pack all this away, and my sign is protected from year to year, and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged. That was the main reason I went for this. And we use these kinds of signs um, when I was a recruiter, and I found them very, very, very excellent. Make sure your colors are bright on your sign. You saw mine was turquoise. I think it stands out pretty well. And if you have colors associated with your, um, with your business, then make sure that that's on there. Mine also mentioned that I have online classes and my website. So think of other things that you may want to put on there. Um, okay, the sign. Um, I have this that I put on my booth that was about the artist, and it was just a, a framed informational kind of um, thing that you could even stand up on a table. And it tells a little bit about me and about uh, my background and how long I've been China painting and the fact that I teach online and those kinds of things. It might be something that you'd want to do, especially if you have a booth somewhere and, and like maybe at a mall or something and you really want to um, include uh, information about yourself there. Now, you know, the other thing that you definitely need is a business card and a holder. Um, the reason I say a holder is you can put these on your table and people will take a million of them. If you put them in a holder, they usually take one. I'm going to come forward so you can see my business card because I know you can't see it from back here very easily. Okay, this is my business card. My, oops, my business card has my name. I got to get it back here so I can see too. Oops, I got to come back this way. It has my name, it has my email from my business and my website. And at the bottom it says, Online classes, downloadable e-studies with links to Facebook and YouTube tutorials and supplies. So in, in a second, reading this card, they know what I do. But the thing I like is on the back of this, I have all my information about my social media. So um, it says the social media links. I have Facebook classes for beginners, and I have down the the website and when it occurs, 10 a.m. Eastern, I have um, a group classes and when the group has their classes at 6 p.m. Eastern, I have the website, I have my YouTube website, Instagram and Pinterest. So this is the basic card. The cards run about uh, 100 for $18. Now you go 100. I don't need 100. I barely have a few. Well, I use these, uh, first of all, anytime I make a sale, I put a card in if they didn't take a card because I want to make sure that they know who painted this in case they want another one. I also keep them in my wallet. You never know when you're out and somebody says, hey, I, I, a friend of mine had a beautiful, um, uh, you know, like a, maybe a picture frame that you painted and I would, I would love you to paint one for me and you've got your card and you can give it to them. It's really important. Now, I don't get the fancy glossy card. I just get the basic card. I pay a little extra to have it on two sides, but I think for me that's, that is important. There are a couple ways you can do your price tags. I mean, you can do your price tags the sticky way, you know, and, and that, that's easy and they're easy to put on and take off. Um, however, um, you may want to try just writing them on with permanent marker. I think you run a risk, though, of people wiping it off and saying, how much is this, and you won't know. So I, I would probably go with the little stickies, and that way they know you're expecting to find a little sticky on there. Those can be taken off, too. But um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important. You need cash, and you need change. Think about when you price things. Do you price things at, you know, uh, Twelve fifty, or do you price them at like thirteen, fourteen? Think of all the different ways that you can do things so that you know what kind of change you need. Um, if you make everything twelve ninety five because you want it to be at the top of that range, but you want them to think, you know, well, people tend to think then, oh, it's twelve, it's not thirteen. Um, then make sure you have a lot of nickels. You may need them. And always, always at the beginning, you're going to run into a lot of 20s if people have cash. 
Make sure you have the change for the cash. Um, and some people like a receipt and you kind of want to keep track too. So a receipt book is good to have. And this is one of those that has the carbon copy. Um, I always keep one and I always write down all my sales on that so that I have a record of what I've sold because I do have to claim it at the end. Um, but before I go, I also make a list of everything I'm taking with me so that I know later on when I'm going through it, if I missed writing something down, I can, I can uh, check and I'll know what that is. Now, here are some things that may be helpful for you. If you accept credit cards, you need a little sign on your table that says credit cards accepted. That way, people know it. You're busy talking to a customer. And if I have two tables, I have it in two places that says credit cards accepted. Now, I accept credit cards because I use Square. I'm not, I'm not you know, promoting one or the other. I, there might be others out there too, but I like Square. I know a lot of people that use it. You can order it online free. And then the way you pay for it is every time you make a sale, they take a percentage out. Um, it, this is what it looks like. It's, it's really tiny and it has, I don't know if you can see or not, but on this side, it has a slot so you can put your credit card through it. I will tell you that since I have been using Square, I have doubled my sales at every show because people spend credit card money much freer than they do cash or check. Now, if you have a phone, like I do, here's uh, my older phone. Um, if you lift up the end here, and this is an iPhone, this little piece right there slides right in. You push it down and it's in place. And you have the app on here, the Square app. That's why your phone needs to be charged and your friend's phone needs to be charged. And what you do is when you make a sale, then you, you, the app will walk you right through. You should probably do a test before you go to make sure the money's going to your bank and that everything is set up correctly. Do like a dollar or a penny or something, but do a sale and test it. But then you swipe the card and you can also create an email list with this. If people give you their email, you can give them an email receipt. Then you also have a copy of the receipt here and you don't need to use your book. But these, this is something that I have found has been so, so very helpful. I, I, I can't even tell you. And the number of sales that I make has certainly increased since I've had the ability to give people um, this uh, option. So. Um, that's all there is to it. So try it. Um, the other thing is make a, make a thing that says who they make out the check to and put it on the table. It'll save a lot of time. It, I have down here who they make the check out to, and then they know I take credit cards and I take checks and it just will save time. Um, plate holders. You're going to need plate holders. And the other little trick, and I forgot to bring it with me, but I, you, I can ex describe it to you is, okay. I try to move my smaller items up to eye level. It's important because if they get lost on the table with a lot of other smaller items, it's clutter. So I have these risers. Now, I use these plate holders for my smaller items. So like for this one, I have this. This is a really cool plate holder. It's an older one. And um, on some of them, this back part, this round part, adjusts backwards and forwards so that you can put larger or smaller plates in it. This one doesn't, and the, everything's packed away right now. I couldn't find the one that I had that was. And then I also like these plate holders. Now, I don't know if you've seen these or not. These are plate holders that have three parts to them. This is an extension, so if you have a very tall piece, it protects it if somebody, somebody were to bounce against the table or hit your table. It'll keep it from falling to some degree, you know, because it has something here behind it. But if you're using smaller pieces, you simply uh, fold that down, and there you go. You have a regular plate holder. Now, I always put a tag on my plate holders that says not for sale, NFS. 
And that's because people a lot of times will want to buy your plate holder. And um, if you're not at the table, the next person knows what to tell them, then that's not a problem. Oh, okay. Um, now we're talking about risers. This is one of my risers. I actually got these at resale stores and I found them very, very helpful. I painted it black and I put all my little, my little stuff on it. And it, I also find that when I have um, two tables, if we're in a row, I can turn it longwise and it can separate my table from the next table, which I think is kind of nice. It kind of gives people a view of just my things. I'll show you some of the others. Um, this is another one. It's home constructed, I'm sure. And it's kind of cool. And this one needs to be on a corner or something because it has these little holders all the way around and you can put small items all the way around and on top of this one. And this is really neat and I like it a lot and I've used it a lot and normally things off of my risers, the small things that are on my risers sell better than the small things that I have on my table. Um, the other thing I found at a resale, I tried using a little Christmas tree but it's tended to hide my um, ornaments a little too much. I was lucky enough to find this is a wire tree. It does not spin. You don't want something that spins. You might think that that's helpful to people. All they'll do is spin your ornaments off. So I would say, please don't get something that spins, especially if you're just using hooks to put your ornaments on with. I tie mine with the ribbon. That way they're a little more secure. If the kid decide, you know, child decides they want to touch it, it won't come right off. And then I put them on all sides of this. And I think it works pretty well, and I just cover it with ornaments. Um, and then I also sometimes will have a basket of ornaments around. Um, I'm just trying to keep, especially children, because you always have children at these types of things, from they want to touch it, and you just don't want them to break it. So um, that's another thing I do. You're going to need bags. You're going to need tissue, something to wrap your, your things up in. So make sure that you um, make sure that you have bags and tissue available because um, it, it's important that everything is wrapped. Don't use newspaper. I'll tell you why. Newspaper comes off on your china. The newsprint does. And um, when somebody opens up their china at home and they see big black prints on it, they don't know that. They don't know that it's not in the china, actually. They may try to rub it off, but not everybody thinks about that. And it can be a problem. And I remember one of our um, china painters actually getting a call from a customer that was somebody she knew who had bought a piece from her and said, it's all black on the front. It's all smudged. What do I do? And she told her, wash it off. So I would say use tissue. It just It's just better. Make sure you put a card in. Make sure you put if you don't, I tape these to the back of every piece like this before I set the pieces up with information about the piece and everything. But if you don't do that, make sure you put one of these in every um, package and the types of bags you use are up to you. I guess uh, it depends what you can afford. If you can afford fancy bags, great. Otherwise, use what you have. Um, now, you need, to, you need to paint at the show. And if you're having a show like we are, where everybody is uh, in the same show, we have uh, 10, 15 painters at um, our show, you could designate that one person paint for a while and then somebody else paint for a while, maybe somebody who doesn't have a table. The cool thing about painting is, and even if you don't have time to paint, at least do this. Take your, if you have a small one, Take a small palette with you. If not, I maybe you don't need your big palette. You could just mix up a, a, a little bit of paint and put it on a tile ahead of time. I usually take this, my tile, my, my uh, um, paper towel, my oils, and my mineral oil with me and my that kind of thing. And I take a couple of brushes and I take a piece to paint on. And what I do is I explain to people. Now, let's say I, I'm not painting but I want to explain to them. I say to them, first of all, because if you're at a craft show, 
they assume you did not paint this, that you bought this stuff and brought it in or something. So the first thing you say is, do you know that this, that I painted all of these pieces, that these are all hand painted? No, how did you do that? Okay, then I have my paint in the file available and I say, well, we use powder paint, comes like this. I put about, you know, a dime size on a, on a, a tile and I put a few drops of mineral oil and I mix it until it's the consistency of toothpaste. And then I would have my, now I don't have any on here now, but I would have my paint on here and I would show them what it looks like or I would just leave this open so they could see and I didn't have to open it every time. And I would say, and then we paint with oils and how we clean our brushes. And usually what I do is I take my brush and I demonstrate on the piece that I have there something small, like um, something I can do quickly. I can do a, 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 ro a wild rose pretty quickly. And, it, and people are really astounded because you use two colors to shade it. So that's, that's what I do. So it's up to you what you think would work for you, but make sure that you either painted your place or have someone painting or at least have your paints available so you can answer questions that people have about this. All right, that's the, my list of things. When you're packing up, I would say try to keep things, you know, together. And I use those big plastic tubs. I like those. And I usually turn it on its side and load it with plates, but plate, bubble wrap, plate, bubble wrap, plate, bubble wrap. And, and that works pretty well for me loading things. You're gonna need an emergency kit, tape, duct tape, I've had a need for duct tape because at one time it, I had a situation where um, my display started to fall apart and I could duct tape it. Um, let's see. Uh, scissors. You're going to need scissors. Pins. Especially if you're putting um, a sheet on and you're pinning it to make um, a table cover for yourself. I also say have pens, markers, and say have some snacks, take some water, um, and maybe a sack lunch. You may not be able to get away to eat. I, one thing I didn't talk about, silks. Um, sometimes, as some of our shows, we've used, like, these two things are risers, right? You're going to need some boxes or something to put underneath, to put on the table. I don't have any boxes close by, but you're going to need something to put, well, let's say this is a box, okay, to put on the table, and then you might want to drape over it. A drape is just like a piece of really nice fabric that, um, and you can put several of these by them together so that they give your china different heights, and maybe, you know, if I have two tables, these two risers aren't going to do it. I'm going to take boxes with me, with drapes that are probably either black or a color. They can be a color in that case. And um, I will drape the box and then I will put the items on it here and there so that it attracts attention. But the idea is to get as much as you can up because people are standing at your table and their eye level is about here. So you want these things at eye level. Great, thank you. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.